It's a comment you often hear church goers who can appreciate a good sermon. Here's what you usually hear. People who have gone to church and received God's words will often say, that man can just flat preach. They're saying that he really says something that I can understand. He really emotionally excited me about the word of God. He, he got my attention. He, he, he can just flat out preach, expound on the word of God. That's what preaching is. It, it's teaching. That man can just flat out preach. The word preach, in this sense, comes from the Greek word, which means to share the good news. It is the good news about a savior who is present to help sinners become saints and to go free. It's one place where you don't always hear bad news. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a news junkie. I, I like to watch the news, brother. When I'm not, I'm not watching the news, I'm watching the sports. And, and a lot of folks, they don't like to watch the news because news bore them. And, and it's getting to the place where it's boring me, brother, because cause you don't hear any good news on the news. MSNBC, CNN, World News, all of them, they got a whole lot of bad news to tell you. But very seldom do we get any, any good news. That's why preaching is so important. It is the good news of the gospel, the gospel, the life of our Lord and our Savior, the one who died for our sins on the cross on Calvary, is the good news about Jesus. Who is God? Did you, did you know that Jesus is really God? And God is really Jesus and the Holy Spirit is Jesus and, and the Holy Spirit is God. They're all three in one. Read Colossians. This is a short book. Paul will talk about that in the book of Colossians. God called me today and want to know, how do you study the Bible? I said, open it and start reading it, baby. Leave the history books alone because nobody really likes history unless you're a history freak. But go to the book of Romans and it'll give you a, a real good insight on what's going on in the Bible. Paul will, tell you, Paul will tell you in the book of Romans a whole lot about what's going on in the Bible. Then read some small books like I just asked you to do. Look at Colossians. Go, go home and read Colossians and it will tell you that Jesus is God. John told us in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word put on flesh. In other words, Pastor told us last week, it was the Logos. Wow. That put on the Theos. That became the Humos. That showed up after Christos. I, I, I was really excited about that. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But man, that man can flat out preach. Talks about sinners who wants to go free. In Matthew 5 and 6, we find the longest written sermon given by Jesus Christ in the Bible. We learn tonight that Jesus was a preacher too. And a teacher. In Matthew 5 and 6. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Jesus is sitting on a grassy slope with his disciples. Sitting around him, he began with the B attitudes. The B attitude with the blessed attitude. I know we would think they'd say beautiful. I used to think it was a beautiful attitude because it's a beautiful word found in that. If you read them. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But Jesus begins talking about the beatitude. He then moves to the influence of every Christian. In short, he started by telling us that we were blessed because of what we are, who we are, and what we do. Blessed. Favored by God. That's what blessed is. Hilariously favored by God. I mean, happily blessed by God. Some theologians would teach you that the word blessed means happy, and it does. But it means favored by God, hilariously favored by God. In short, he started telling them that they were blessed because of who we were. blessed because we're Christians. In that we are the light and the salt in the world that we live. 
I wear a band every day that tells me that I am the light of the world. Amen. Ye are the light of the world. Amen. So let your light, the Bible says, so shine before men that they will see your good works. Not glorify you, but, but glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Young lady asked me the other day, well, will my light ever go out? Like when you die, your life's over and your light's going to go out. And the Hebrew writer tells us, but daughter, it is appointed once the man to die. So we're all going to die. All of our lights are going to go out. Your life is your light. So let your life so shine before other people. Amen. You're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. Here's a good devotional question for you to ponder. What sermon taught by your pastor inspired you the most? Here's the prayer for you today. May the Lord bless those who are called by him to speak into your life. God's word. On a regular basis. I know, I know it's hard to think about what, what, what sermon you heard the last time. Because I, I always go to thinking about mine, brother. Because when, when I was standing up here one night and I said, uh, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. That sticks with me all of the time because it, it makes sense to some people because we all have a mind. So Paul says, so let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. We need to be thinking like Jesus, acting like Jesus, looking like Jesus, praying like Jesus, loving like Jesus. I always think about this when they say, back to the basis. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. Somebody out there need to know we need to get back to the basics. It's not so hard loving God. But we make life hard. We see tonight Jesus is teaching on the mountainside. Every time I go to Matthew and study the Sermon on the Mount, uh, when Jesus was sitting on the side of the mountain, and the Bible said, and when he was set, his disciples came to him. There were thousands of people on that mountainside that day. And it's one of the greatest forms of really loving God that you can actually find in the Bible. In that service that day, Sister Darby, there was no legalism. What you talking about legalism, Reverend? I'm talking about pointing a finger. I'm talking about talking about the young lady because she didn't have anything but her spandex, her club clothes to wear to church that Sunday. Legalism. I'm talking about the person that came to church that day smelling like marijuana because he had just had a joint the night before and he didn't have time to clean up, but he was making his way to church and nobody wasn't sitting there pointing a the finger at him. The greatest sermon that this preacher ever taught, man, the Sermon on the Mount, everybody was there. The rainbow group, they were there. Nobody wasn't talking about, oh, that's the rainbow group, put them out. Man, where the garden was there, bro. Nobody wasn't talking about, put him out because he was packing. But the Bible said when Jesus was set on the mountainside, he began to preach, and he began to teach some. He began to teach some blessed attitudes. I've been listening to preachers for a long time, and some mighty wonderful preachers like the Dr. C. A. W. Clark of the Good Street Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas, would come down here and preach the pews out of a church. The Reverend Ransom Howard in Port Arthur, Texas. Amen. Preached a uh, mortgage burning service here in Beaumont and said, burn that junk. Preached the place down. I could remember hearing great pulpiteers standing and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want Dr. John R. Adolph standing and preaching behind this pulpit. It's worth the wait. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Just last Thursday night, preached me all the way up into heaven. Amen. He's on a mission. Every sermon in this book that he taught has been a great word for me. But I stopped by to tell you tonight, baby, that he was seeing the multitudes. But I read in the Bible where it said, the grass withers, baby, and the flower fades. But the word of God, it will last it lasts forever. I think some of y'all are standing to agree with me tonight. If I would tell you that we're living in perilous times. Yeah, it's the last days. It's been the last days since Jesus died on the cross. But the times that we're living in, we're living in perilous times. And we need a Savior. We need a word from God. We need a preacher who's going to sit on the side of the mountain and not point his finger at people, but open the book and say, what thus says the Lord? Perilous time. Nature is in an upheaval. Don't, don't know how to even present itself. The whole state of Texas could have burned down just a month ago when fire started up in the north in the panhandle. Fire like they've never seen before in their life. Tornadoes hitting in places where they never hit before. We're living in perilous times. We had three homicides in Beaumont, Texas this week. Three people died violent deaths in our city, a city with 119,000 people, and you got three people dead this week. We are living in perilous times. I don't know about you, but the Bible speaks to perilous times. Disease is running rampant everywhere. Just got over a pandemic and now we're talking about measles. Amen. Got to protect the babies. His parents won't get the children's shots. When I was a little boy, I had to go take my shots. Whether it was measles or not, they wouldn't let you go to school if you didn't have your shots. Nobody wasn't saying, I ain't going to put that in my body. I took them every time and thank God I'm still here. But we got a generation who won't obey. Atheism is running rampant in the world. Disobedient children and parents who won't adhere to God. There, there are wars and, and rumors of wars. We're looking at Ukraine. We've stopped talking about Ukraine now, and we start talking about Jerusalem and Palestine. We, we've stopped talking about Jerusalem and Palestine. Now we're talking about Haiti. Haiti is just imploding today. And it could happen right here in America. We're living in the last days. And in the last days, there'll be perilous times, baby. But the songwriter said, in times like these, you're going to need a Savior. In times like these, you're going to need an anchor. You're going to have to be sure. Go ahead, Brother Dobby. Somebody know what I'm talking about. And be very sure that your anchor is going to hold and grip to the solid rock. Because be careful because Jesus is the rock. Old folks used to say it like this. He's a rock in a weary land. And that means just what it said. Man, those old preachers here used to preach that word and they could flat out preach. It's been, I've been in the midst of those great preachers and teachers all of my life. The Bible speaks the truth. Faith coming by hearing. Hearing coming by the word of God. How can they hear unless there be a preacher? Amen. How can they know unless they get to my house? He told us in his word for Satan not to gather in a Yourselves together as it ought to be. Told us in his word to remember the Sabbath day. And keep it holy. Get yourself together and do like these people are doing this evening. And get to the house of the Lord and get set where you can get under some kind of word of God. So your faith can be increased. Because the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and 
Yeah, y'all been to church and they're hearing by the word of God. And how can they hear lest they be a preacher? We, we, we study the book of Matthew tonight, an eyewitness to Jesus. Matthew was a very learned man. He was a, a tax collector in Capernaum, and Jesus taught in Capernaum. He, he healed in Capernaum. So Matthew knows exactly what he's talking about. Chapter 5, verse 1 leads us to the greatest sermon ever preached by God. Sermon come to mind. This is not a time for legalism. This is a time to reach the masses. This sermon's come to mind. That this is not a time for legalism, but this is a time for us to get the word to somebody where they might come running and crying, what must I do to be saved? But the Bible said, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we see Jesus embarking on a sermon, amen, in a non-legalistic crowd. Just got run out of town because he healed a man on the Sabbath day. It wasn't the crooks that ran him out of town. It wasn't the wicked folks that ran him out of town. It was people like us. It was the religious leaders that ran him out of town because he healed a man with a withered hand on the Sabbath day. What man having a cow stuck in the mud on Sunday wouldn't go and get his cow out of the mud? So what did Jesus do? He cut out. He left town. But that's all right. He knew his time was coming close. So he got somewhere where he could preach a word to somebody. He found his way to a mountain. He began to teach from the book of Matthew. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What he be saying is this, that we ourselves are sinners. We should be seeking God and asking God to forgive. If God have not forgiven you for your sins, you are poor in spirit. I know you thought he was going to be saying, blessed are the poor in spirit because you're going to be rich. That's not it. You're already rich if you got up this morning. He get on down and he said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted mourning. And in, in this passage, he means you're mourning because of your sin. I don't know what sin you commit, but you know what sin. You don't know what sin I commit, but I know my sin. And my sin caused me to have trouble when I love a God who woke me up this morning. When I love a God who put food on my table. When I love a God who's a doctor that's never lost a, uh, a patient. When I love a God who's a lawyer. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Those who Seek the Lord will soon have all they want. Those who can stand and pray, not my will, God, but let your will be done. You know, the Bible alludes to this when it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his, but, but, but we won't listen to anything like that because it won't put $10 in your pocket. But it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You got to look for it before you find it, baby. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then with that, he looked again. He said, now blessed are those that do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Seek righteousness with everything you got. God requires obedience even more than sacrifice. Seek righteousness and truth. That's what he's telling you to do. Blessed are they that do hunger. You got to look for righteousness just like you look for a steak or a pot of pinto beans and cornbread or mustard greens with ham hocks in it. You got to seek God. You got to hunger and thirst after God like you get hungry for a meal. Blessed are the pure in heart, 
but they shall see God. What he's trying to tell us is that by faith in Jesus and believing in Jesus and having received forgiveness for our sin, you have eternal life. The pure in heart. Do you want to see God? But here the preacher telling you today, you have to be pure in heart to see. The Bible says only the righteous is going to be able to be with God. We all going to see God, but we now are not going to live with God. I'm going to make it plain tonight. I just want to tell you the truth. Don't play with God because God don't play. He's an awesome God. The devil don't curse, Pastor taught y'all that. It's God who cursed. And I don't want God cursing me. I want God loving me. I want God keeping me. I want God forgiving me. I want sure sheltering me. I want God covering me with the blood of his son Jesus. I want God dispatching angels to watch over me and camp round about me when I'm going out and when I'm coming in. I want to love on God. Then he said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they are the children of God. Well, all creations of God, baby, but we're not all children of God. Until you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, who is God, you're not a child of God. I want to make it plain to you tonight, if you, until you accept Jesus Christ, and I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit later. Blessed are the peacemakers. Seek to win others to Jesus. Get somebody to Jesus. And I always say this, charity starts at home. I thank God for a grandfather. Mind you, it wasn't at the house. I thank God for a grandfather at his house that came, got me as a child, and brought me to church with him on Sunday night. He gave me Jesus. He took me to church. I'm sitting there watching preachers. Dr. A.L. Price preaching the gospel and shouting and hooping and hollering. Man, I've been among some wonderful preachers and the old saints would pat their foot on the front and every now and then, Brother Darby, they would pat their heel for a while and I'm a little boy sitting there, I can remember, I would pat my foot like my grandfather and every now and then I would pat my heel, just didn't know he was training me. He was training me to love God. He was training me to honor God. He was getting me to Jesus. He was a peacemaker. And Papa lived out his days. He, he made the three score and ten. And by reason of strength, he made a few more. But I, I thank God for those who gave me Jesus. And here's Jesus on the Sermon of Mount preaching himself. Jesus, the preacher, that man can flat out preach. Amen. So, so, so what is this text really talking about tonight? Well, Jesus is trying to tell us what John the Baptist was telling us when Jesus came on the scene. He said, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus told us the same thing when we could look at Jesus preaching. The first thing Jesus told him was, repent, be sorry for your sins. That's what the Bible, that's what repent means. Turn away from your old ways and, and, and don't go back to them either. Amen. But if we sin, here's what James told us. If we sin, God is faithful and he's just to cleanse us from all our sins. Amen. He, he'll give you another chance, but don't keep going for another chance and another chance and another chance and another chance. Just repent. Don't do it no more. Stop lying. You don't have to lie. You're a grown man, a grown woman. 
Just stand there and tell it like it is. I don't care how sour it is. Tell it like it is. I don't care what price you have to pay. Tell it like it is. When I was a child, I thought like a child, baby. I acted like a child. I lied to get out of trouble. I, I lied to get a good grade. But when I became a man, When I became a woman, I put those childish things away and I stopped putting myself in a position where I had to lie. He's a good God. We got to repent. Matthew 4 and 7, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Change your mind. Change your inner self. Change the way you think. Let the mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Regret your sins, baby. In other words, have some remorse for the things that you did that was against God. Have, have, have some remorse for the things that, that you've done all right. You don't have to do it but one time. He said, repent. Let me know you're sorry. Seek God's purpose for your life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. His righteousness. Not only should we repent, I'm going to try to hurry to a close. I don't want to be here too long. But we got to have faith in God. Jesus taught, have faith in God. This was some messages that Jesus taught. Mark 11 and 22, if you want to look for yourself, 10 words. And Jesus answered them, said unto them, have faith in God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Hope is what you want to have. Hope in Jesus, baby. Hope in God for the new house. Ask God for, if a man had need for anything, let him ask God. And then wait on God. And while you're waiting, don't just sit there with twiddling your thumbs. Don't just sit there and God, think God's going to bring a car and drop it in your driveway. You got to get up and do something to get what you want in life. You got to go to work. Find yourself some work where you can have some retirement to come to you. But, Dobby, if you didn't work for mobile, you ain't got no retirement coming from mobile. You didn't know work nowhere. Don't expect the Social Security check when you get 60 or 62. You ain't putting nothing in. You don't get nothing out. But it's God who will give you the power to get wealth. And the power that God gives you is favor with him and with man. Don't want to work? What you going to do? Just sit there and dry up? It's going to be all right. 41 years I put in work. I didn't mind getting up 5.30 in the morning, going to work, doing what I had to do, coming to church on Wednesday, getting back down. You can, if I can do it, you can do it. Big old man, you're much smarter than I am. You're wiser than I am. You're bigger than me. If a man had to eat for anything, let him ask God for it. If a boss got a job down there at Popeye's, go ask the man for a job. Go to that Sam's the other day. I went in Sam to get some tires, put on a car. I asked the young man, I said, man, y'all got some job? Y'all got He thought I wanted a job. No, sir, we ain't hiring right now. I said, okay, well, that's all right. Well, Sam me a set of tires. <laughs> but I know how to ask for a job. Can't tell you nothing that you don't like, but no. Have faith in God. Jesus told the people on the mountain to have faith with God. That's so they could be pleasing to God. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. But we have to believe that he is. God is the creator of every living thing. It wasn't a big bang. Amen. If it was, God made the bang. But God stooped over a lump of clay. Pastor preached that sermon called it patty cake. From the man out of the dirt, blew into it, breath into his nostrils, and man became a living soul. God is eternal. They want to ask you, who made God? Didn't nobody have to make God. God made everything. He was already here. (laughs) 
And the Bible says yesterday, today, and forever, he will always be here. Have faith in God. What that means is trust in the Lord. With all, with all, I know you can't see him. I know you can't back for him and say, hey, come here, God. I, I know you can't handle God, turn him any kind of way you want to turn him. I know you can't reach in God's pocket. But believe in God. Have faith in God that he is and he is a rewarder. Wow. Being in Christ, baby, we got to have a strong imagination. When I look at trees, I think about the poem written by Robert Frost that says, only God can make a tree. Who, make, who can make a moon that Brother Darby never go out? As long as since God spoke and said, let there be light and the moon begin to rule at night and the sun begin to rule in the day, it has never gone out. Who can do that? Have you ever looked at the sun re and said, Lord, this sun been here mighty, 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 mighty long time. It has never gone out. Only God can make a tree. So trust in the Lord with all your heart, baby. Lean not. Time's going to get hard, but don't lean to your own understanding. Friends are going to get few, but don't lean to your own understanding. God's got a plan for you. He's got a reward for you. And you got to seek him. You got to trust him. You got to love him. You got to have faith in God. You got to know who God is. And why should you know who God is? And your children don't know who God is. Well, I started with train them up. Train them. Train them before they go to public school. Get them in church. Let them do like that child did today. She already know the vision statement in her church. She's a church baby. And she's going to make it. Even in these perilous times, you know what's going on? God will give his angels charge. You wasn't in the South End the other night when that boy was shooting up people. You wasn't in the, on the highway the other day when that truck turned, when that truck the trailer turned over, hit a truck, truck hit another truck, killed three people. You weren't there. God had given his angels charge over you. It wasn't that you wasn't out and about, but he didn't have you in that specific vicinity at the time. He don't have you in Haiti tonight. Well, well, they done took over the game. Oh, over, over, over Haiti. Ain't nothing going on there but gangsters. And they got guns. The president done left. Amen. In Ukraine, they, they done told, they, they've torn Palestine up. The Muslims might as well go on where they need to go because Netanyahu is not going to hold up till he wipe them all out. He must have heard what God told David and them when they went to Ai. He said, go in there and kill everything. Everything breathing. I want it dead. God is an awesome God. God don't play. Kill them all because they won't worship me. They got other gods. God hates idol worshipers. Didn't he tell us I am a jealous God? Boy, jealousy will make you hurt some. Anybody besides me ever been jealous? Jealous will make you hurt somebody till you can come to your senses. He said, I am a jealous God. And thou shalt have no other God before me. No thing, no stuff, no child, no car, no house, no horse, no car, no boat. Thou shalt have no money in the bank. Thou shalt have no other God before me. So have faith in God. Repent for your sins. Not only do we have to repent, not only do we have to have faith, but we have to believe. Song writer used to say, only believe. All things are possible. What don't you guys understand about all? All things are possible if you can only believe. 
Believe God for what you want in life. Pray for my son. Well, believe that God is going to have your son all right. Pray for my family. Well, believe that when I pray that your family is going to be all right. Because if you can believe it, then you can receive it. Believe that God is a healer and you can receive it. Believe that God will make a way and you'll receive a way. Believe that you shall live and not die and proclaim. I don't know. Believe it. This is what Jesus was talking about on the mount. He was trying to get us to believe. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Believe that He is born of a virgin. Believe that he came all the way from heaven down to, to save a wretch like me and you. Jesus preached one of his most powerful sermons on the cross. On that cross, he looked down at sinners and he said, Father, forgive them. But they know not what they do. He preached his greatest sermon. Man, that man was flat out preaching. He preached some of his greatest sermons on the cross. Standing there between two male factors on the cross, one rebuking him and one looking at him and realized, surely this must be the Son of God. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He acknowledged Jesus. He, he seek Jesus out on the cross. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, he was down. He was going to die on the cross. Jesus looked over and preached and said, baby, today you, you will be with me in paradise. He preached some of his best sermons on the cross. We got to believe that he died all day Friday. My Bible says he went down in hell and preached the captive tree. The ground began to hurt, to begin to rock and reel like a drunk man. They seen the dead walking among the living. Oh, he died. He died. He hung his head and the locks of his shoulder. And the last sermon that he preached, he said, Father, into thy hands, glory. Hallelujah. I commend my spirit. Have you given your spirit to God? Have you given your life to God? And the Bible say he hung his head in the locks of his shoulder. He died. He died because he couldn't die no more. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampled out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He died so much till my song is, oh, how I love Jesus. Wow, oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. He died all day Saturday. But the Bible recorded that early Sunday morning, while the dew was still on the roses, he was still preaching, even in the tomb. The Bible said the women went to the tomb to dress the grave. There was a man standing there in shining apparel, asking, why do you come seeking the living among the dead? Here's what they're going to tell you on Easter Sunday. He is not here. He's alive. He's alive. I don't know about you, but oh, I want to see him. Look up on his face. There to seek forever of oh, his amazing grace. Oh, he's a mighty good God. Man, that man was flat out preaching. He came to seek. He came to save that which was lost. Baby, put that QR code on the screen. Somebody tonight might recognize that I'm lost. I just can't get it done by myself. I, I need a preacher like Jesus who would sit down on the side of the mountain. Didn't care if the wine o was there. He came for the wine o. Didn't care if the weed smoker was there. He came for smoking. Didn't care if the rain grow group was there. Boys who think they're girls, girls who there ain't nobody pointing a finger at you. You can be born again. He came to see and to save that which was lost. Just keep on praising. Keep on worshiping. Keep on seeing. 
He came for you. Greatest sermon ever told was on the mount. I don't know about you, baby, but I too was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peace for sure. I know how to roll them. I know how to pass them. I know how to hit them. I know how to bump them. But he came to seek and save me. Put me on a straight and narrow path. The Bible said, wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. But straight is the way and narrow is the gate. Put me on a straight path with a narrow gate. Keep your focus on Jesus. If you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, scan that QR code. You ought to want to hear him. Scan the QR code. Fill out the information. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus and be baptized and you shall be saved. Saved for what, baby? Saved forever. This is not it. He came all the way from down, from heaven down because he knows three score and ten wasn't the end of it. There's an eternity out there for us. Oh, this old body going to lay down one day. But my soul going to be happy. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I might inquire in this temple. Amen. When this life is over, I don't know about you, but I want to see Jesus. I want to walk with the one that died for me. I want to talk with the one that bled on Calvary's hill for me. I want to take the crown that he's going to give me off of my head and throw it at his feet. Because he alone is worthy. Go on, click the QR code. Give your life to Jesus, baby. We are in perilous time. Make sure your anchor is holding on the solid rock. Stay with Jesus. Won't be long. Won't be near long as it has been, baby. It's just about over. Get yourself ready to come to church. When I leave church, I'm getting ready to come back to church because I, I, I want to I wanna get some more of this. I want to get some more of this word in me. I want to know how to walk. I want to know how to talk among them. I want to be who Jesus was talking about when he said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. While I'm here, I want to be able to do some things and get somebody to Jesus and let them know he's real. Talk to some young people and some children and not talk about their pants hanging not talk about the weed on their breath. I want to ask them, do you know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, baby? I can take all that other stuff. It don't matter. I can't fix you, but God can fix you. He told me just to catch you, he's going to clean you. They got to hear it like you heard it. You've been hearing it for 50 years. Give them a chance to hear it for 50 years. Didn't come in until after you heard it about 30 years. Give somebody else a chance, a chance to see Jesus. I don't have nothing else. Stand to your feet. We're going to get our offerings ready. Trust God, baby. Trust him. Take him at his word. He said to give. See, if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. I'm, I'm trusting God for the blessing that we don't have room to receive. He promised that he'd never leave us or forsake us. He put it like this, and lo, I am with you always. I don't know how many times a day when we go through some things, I got to think back on that word, Sister Darby, and say, hey, God is with me. Get a little weary sometimes by Booker cutting them yards, pulling on that rake. Get a little weary sometimes doing my chores, doing the things that I have need to do. Get a little weary sometimes, looking at the children when they ain't going quite right and I'm trying to get them to go in the right direction. I get a little weary sometimes, but he promised me I am with you 
hallways. And I'm standing on the promises of God. I thank God for Pastor Adolph tonight. I thank, let's give God, Pastor, a hand of praise. Because I'm going to say this and I'm going to pray over our offering. That man can flat out preach. Am I lying? No, you ain't lying, Reverend Moore. That man can flat out preach. And I thank God for him in our lives. Amen. Because with God and him, my life is better. And I thank God. Just, just take an evaluation of what's going on now and what was going on then. Amen. So, God, we thank you tonight for the money that you put in our hands, Father. Pray for the world tonight, God. It's in an upheaval. I know that's not about the offering, but this is what you're putting on my heart to say to the people of God. We pray for the world tonight. We pray for our nation. It's in an upheaval. We pray for our city and our community, God. It's in an upheaval. Have mercy on us in this place, God. Lord, dispatch your angels and your preachers and your teachers, somebody to get a word to fail in humanity that you would bless them, God, to be obedient, that you would bless them to trust you, that you would bless them to have faith in you, God. Lord, thank you for the money. Thank you for the word that teaches us. You require obedience even more than sacrifice. Oh, God, I thank you for the word tonight. Bless these your people now as we give and as we leave. Beloved, the Lord bless thee, the Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine on thee, be gracious unto thee. The Lord lifted his countenance upon thee and give you peace. You agree with that? Say amen. Let us go in peace. God bless you. God keep you.